Councillor Robicek. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm keen to uh, position Tideway alongside the overall context of economic uh, generation in, in North Battersea. Um, and why? Because it is clearly intrinsically linked. Um, on, on Saturday, I had the great pleasure to visit a number of Queenstown hostelries, befriending a, a numerous local residents who joined me on my route as I meandered uh, slowly towards Nine Elms and, and ultimately to the Duchess Pub. Um, there is a new owner, recently moved from a restaurant in the city to Battersea, and he drank with us, excitedly explaining um, the commercial rationale of his move. The terrace at, at the Duchess is a prime spot, as many I'm sure will know, to inhale the true scale of the 450 acres of Nine Elms opportunity area, and one can taste the blood and the sweat of the past, the present, and indeed the future, and a future of 16,000 new houses and 25,000 new jobs. The largest regeneration area within central London, as we all know, Nine Elms is undoubtedly the blood of economic recovery for our borough and our capital. Drinking, however, in these economic climates is a, is, is a somber affair, and one is drawn as we were that night to contemplate Britain's struggle to recover from an 18-month recession, Mervyn King's flat growth recovery for the next six months, and indeed, indeed how a Sandbrook's Wandle uh, will always travel far better than a Sharp's Doom Bar. Um, intriguingly, the opportunistic gap left by the exit of major breweries has inspired microbrewers to set up across the capital. London, as we know, is witnessing perhaps the greatest scale of investment since the Victorian age, and we are intrinsically intertwined with it, 40 billion, 40 billion pounds over the next decade. And cumulatively, it will make a vast difference to our economic efficiency and to our quality of life. Regardless of how many drinks one has at the Duchess, it is difficult to miss the power station as it looms in front of you, a phoenix yet to rise from its recent £324 million ash cloud and may well enable banks to search for their own investment partner. Abramovich-style tentacles attract lucrative fish and certainly we need to think very carefully of those fish and that catch. East of the Duchess, north of the throb of the 200 businesses within New Covent Garden Market is of course Tideway the fine patch of development, um, which clearly this is what we're pivotally talking about. Proving public space, 60% of the site given to the public realm, new homes, 240 jobs, along with the uh, ultimate resultant planning gain of, of uh, 33 million pounds towards what is clearly quite crucial, the Northern Line. That this area, which for years has failed to fulfill its potential and is disconnected from surrounding neighborhoods, will become a thriving new quarter for living, leisure and business is clearly undeniable. But certainly, and, and it has been certainly touched on already, we should adopt a creative alignment to embracing our local communities. The Patmore should not be, and I'm going to use a naughty word, ghettoized, um, so I will retract it, but, but be empowered and integrated and advanced. And our reform should reflect this. Our reforms on prioritizing working households while also helping first-time buyers onto the property ladder should and is applauded. So the fresh owner of the newly named Duchess and, and Mulhara represents a new breed. He will be the first of many that will become part of the new Nine Elms pioneering community, weaving the existing with the new and facilitating a new community into an economically resilient quarter. If we are the council for choice, which clearly we are, an opportunity and aspiration then we need to look and plan ahead for those that will be living there, that are living there, and not look back at those that don't. Thank you, Councillor Abercheck. Councillor Osborne. Uh, well, let me just reiterate, we are opposed to the Tideway Industrial Estate paragraph, but we have been invited by Councillor Cuff to recognize the importance of the whole Nine Elms project, and indeed we do. 
We recognise its importance, what it can do for Wandsworth, what it can do for the UK, and we've made that clear in the speeches that have already been made. But it is our job as an opposition to make every, absolutely certain, do everything we possibly can to keep you on your toes and make sure you do it right. So, for a start, let's take uh, the three Richard Rogers requirements to change an area. Uh, Councillor Belton has comprehensively dealt with the first one of those, a favourable economic climate. Let me deal with the second, an enabling council, a facilitating council, not a supine one. Not one that's prepared to stand back and let the developer ride roughshod over the community and the local environment. Uh, observers could be forgiven for thinking that what the council has done is it has used funding for the uncertainty over the funding for the North London Line extension as an excuse to allow developers to minimise their social responsibilities in this particular site. I'd be I would appreciate a guarantee from the leader that that isn't going to happen. Um, second thing that uh, ought to be said is look what we can do. When we get all this money poured into an area, 16,000 new homes, 25,000 new jobs, just imagine what we could do with funds from other sources. There are other sources. For example, uh, the autumn statement has cited powers with regard to the tax increment financing uh, possibilities, which could give us funds, extra funds, for our spending in this area, backed up by the future tax uh, revenue that's going to come in at Nine Elms. The other thing that's possible, of course, is we could, and there is a proposal to this effect on the table, I'd be interested to hear what, uh, what the Council's uh, attitude to this is, for a community endowment fund using funds from the developers which would be able to be there ready for us when the building work stops so there would be sustainable funding for community groups and community activities in the Nine Elms area. But the third thing I'd want to say is this. There are councillors out there, probably now in their 90s, who are haunted by what they did in the 1950s and the 1960s building high-rise blocks for accommodation, building uh, business parks to try and uh, stimulate the local economy. And they got it wrong sometimes. The councillors of all sides got it wrong sometimes. So we have to take care. We do not want the great, towering, bleak, alienating sites that they built. And perhaps there's no real danger of that, that here. Except I would say, if you go to some of the new build along the riverside, they are edging towards some of that sanitised, antiseptic build that was constructed in the 50s and 60s, and we need to take care. We're told to be optimistic by your side about what could be achieved. So let's see what there is in the way of vision. We would suggest there isn't a vision on the part of this council. Where's the environmental sustainability in this new build? Plenty of space for the pedestrian, the cyclist and the tree. Where's the improved access to the river? Where's the traffic calming? Let's hear a bit more about these tall buildings. If we have to have them, will they block out the sun over our parks? Will they create the kind of wind tunnels we're already starting to get on the riverside? Where's the sports provision, leisure provision, community centres, libraries? The kind of things that make a place livable in. Show some vision for us. Let's see you take initiative. Let's see Wandsworth Council act like a council instead of sitting back, supine, letting the developer in and hoping for the best. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. Councillor Govindia. Mr. Mayor, I think the opposition is quite confused. Um, I'm not um, a particularly avid reader of the Bible, but Councillor um, Belton's speech sounded like one that Jeremiah could have made. Um, I think Councillor Osborne's obviously made a speech which sounds a bit like he has not read the APF document. And Councillor Hogg's speech was a bit like he didn't fully digest the figures because one of the key points in the figures about the affordable housing is about the deliverability of affordable housing in a regime where there is no grant funding for affordable housing. And without grant funding, what is the level of affordable housing that you can deliver? In fact, 
what we have decided to do is to put a greater amount of contribution towards the infrastructure. Had we not done so, their, their criticism would have been, oh, lots of homes, but they have nothing to do because there is no infrastructure there. We have put the infrastructure funding there, and now they feel that there should be more homes and perhaps also infrastructure, and also all of these things, like cake and have it, have it eat your cake and have it. They have no understanding, Mr. Mayor, of what the development process is all about. Because, in fact, what Councillor Cuff started with, the Rogers test, one of the other things that happens in an unfavorable economic climate is actually preparation for the upturn. And that is what is happening here. What is happening here is a whole series of developments which are being got ready for implementation. In fact, one is underway because it is in process of being implemented at Riverlight and it's being marketed, marketed overseas. And over a 25-year period, the schemes will change because they will be reflecting the times as uh, when the particular phase is implemented. So the vision is broadly there, but the vision will get fleshed out, fleshed out on each, in each decade as times are different and market conditions vary. But believe you me, the schemes that are broadly, there, broadly planned on the, in the opportunity framework will get built and create jobs, 25,000 jobs, but as a part of the job, job creation thing. What the developers have committed themselves to after both pressure from the council, the GLA and Lambeth, who actually share the vision, and perhaps in your conversations with the leader of Lambeth, you might want to share with him his understanding of the vision, and you will find that his vision is remarkably closer to ours than yours. In the job, on the job front, the developers have agreed a whole series of measures to create apprenticeship opportunities, working with the local FE colleges to create pathways for apprenticeship programs and deliver jobs during construction and post-construction, and in fact sustain that pressure on, on training up our local people to, to take up the opportunities that will arise in Nine Elms. As for the, the affordable housing point, the 2,500 or so affordable housing that will be delivered in the area will not only be available for local people, but they will be at a various, in various forms of tenure, allowing them to have both home ownership, social rent for families, as well as young people, as a single people, as well as couples, and so on. It will create an, a, a, a hub of a community of both people of Wandsworth and Lambeth living in this area, people from elsewhere coming to make a home in this area, making this place hum with activity as well as, as, as play and sport. Because what you need to look at, the details of the linear park again is, there'll be a series of different spaces with a different usage as possible. Wider spaces for sports and, and informal play, some for formal play, from, some for sitting out, some for just enjoying the sun, sunshine and the landscape around it. What we have, Mr. Mayor, as two very clear certainties in the planning, through the planning process. One, the river light development underway. Secondly, the, the American embassy promised to be there in 2017. There are three other major applications coming through the pipeline in the next six or so months. There will be a revitalized Covent Garden market, which will continue to provide opportunities for jobs as well as innovation and retain its, its position as the larder for London. Mr. Mayor, on this side, we have the bigger picture. We have also the commitment to deliver the finer details of that bigger picture, and we have the stamina to stay the ground for 25 years to make sure this place gets built, occupied, and loved. Thank you, Councillor Govindia. The motion now before the Council is the receipt of paragraph 2 of the report number 4 from the Planning Applications Committee in relation to Tideway Industrial Estate. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. <laughs> Those for the motion, 40. Those against the motion. Mm -hmm. 
Those against the motion is 12. Any abstentions? No. The result of the voting is 40 for the motion, 12 against. The motion is carried.